what we're doing here, this is the E-Flight Expo. We have all the thing considered on electric is on the in the E-Flight Expo program, which you find all around here uh, and everywhere in the on the Arrow, which we produce together with the Arrow. And uh, session which we have now is a session on fixed wing electric aircraft. Where we are, when we're going to start, we have uh, four, five manufacturers plus one uh, operator, we could say, from Sweden, uh, to see where we are going. And as we have a lot to say, and uh, when you have questions afterwards, you uh, we will have a microphone and pass it along, so you can, we will have time for a Q and A. I hope uh, so, and for giving us this time, I think we're going to start now. Our first speaker is Martin Freeman from uh, Diamond Aircraft. They maybe you have heard that they have an electric version of the DA40, one of the most used training planes. So, I give you the mic and it's yours. Alright, welcome everybody. So my name is Martin Feiling and I'm the project manager and technical lead of uh, the EDA40, which is Diamond's latest project in our way moving forward to electrify aviation. So in the next eight minutes I'm going to tell you a bit about what started this electrification at Diamond and why we chose this um, product to develop it further. So um, Diamond actually has a quite rich history of electrification products, uh, projects and it all started back in 2011 with a, a DA36 E-Star which was world's first uh, aircraft with a serial hybrid architecture. This, um, this project got so much attention uh, that uh, we with our partners de decided to develop it further and the uh, DA36 E-Star 2 was born which had an improved performance and uh, a mass reduction as well. We also played around with uh, distributed process systems. Um, so with HEMIP, which is our hybrid electric multi-engine plane, we demonstrated world's first twin-engine serial hybrid aircraft. So you can see where this is going with, with world's first. Um, so with the E-Day of 40, we intend to become the world's first certified CS23. And with CS23, I mean the full CS23 level two VFR and IFR training aircraft. So, first of all, why electric? Um, you must have heard this numerous times before. Um, it actually poses a value for the customer. So, electric aircrafts offer a, a significant value to operator, operators when compared to combustion engine variants. And these key benefits include, of course, reduced operating costs, simpler maintenance, leading into uh, higher uptimes, and of course the environmental issues. So, a lower noise fit footprint and lower local emissions. And why did we choose to do it now? Um, well, that's because of a recent developments, especially in the, in the battery technology. Um, we can see actually some good positive trends going up, so the battery price is falling, and in the meantime, the battery capacity is uh, rising. And furthermore, the regulatory process, the regulators, EASA and FAA, are getting a better understanding of what is necessary to safely integrate such a battery pack in an aircraft. So, then it was for us important to look at the customer requirements. Um, and the majority of our customers are actually uh, private and professional flight uh, trading organizations. And we sat with them around the table and asked them, what do you need in the aircraft? And basically, for an electric training aircraft, there are three things. Uh, they fly uh, short but frequent uh, training flights. The flight duration is somewhere between one and two hours, and they need a platform to do VFR and IFR exercises. So translating that into a product uh, requirements, it means that uh, for an all-electric training aircraft you need a single engine training platform that has VFR and IFR capability, that has at least this 60 minutes endurance, plus a reserve, and a fast turnaround time. I want to take this moment to quickly explain the difference between uh, like an EDA40 the electric version and the classical combustion engine, because we do not see it as a direct replacement. Um, in fact, it is seen as an enhancement or an add-on to the Diamond aircraft trading family. So the EDA40, the electric version, can be used in the first phase of pilot training, so for all flights in the vicinity of the airfield. 
And then later on in the pilot training process where longer cross-country uh, flights are uh, needed, uh, the DA-40 NG uh, can be used. Then taking a look at the product. So we introducing basically the e 40 what is it? Um, this is going to be um, an all-electric and initially two-seat uh, circuit trainer. And it's characterized by, by its low operating cost. Further, we're going to implement a, a fast charge battery system to allow for quite fast turnaround times which are needed in a flight training environment. Um, about, a, bit, about a couple of figures about the range and endurance. So the endurance, including the reserve, is going to be 90 minutes and its range, the range is going to be approximately 115 nautical miles. I must say these are based right now on our current models and we are working up to building an electric prototype to actually verify them um, in flight. What's also important, uh, and that's part of the training concept, is that we have similar controls and a similar cockpit layout to the uh, DA40NG, so that any student pilot can easily can start on, on the electric version and quite easily transition to um, the uh, DA40NG uh, once he or she requires longer flights. And then in terms of uh, certification, um, this is going to be an STC on the already existing DA40 and G airframe, meaning that we are actually we're quite comfortable saying that we can finish the certification by the end of next year, so the end of 2023. Then let's look a bit more about the details of the powertrain. So uh, we're working together with, with our two partners. First of all, uh, EP Power Systems, a, a US-based battery uh, supplier, which is offering us a modular battery system for our aircraft. And physically, we place the batteries in two locations of the aircraft, uh, behind the engine up front and under, as a belly pod under the aircraft. And the reason why we put it as a belly pod under the aircraft is to be, say, future proof um, and that we will not um, have to occupy the rear seat with batteries. So, uh, initially, it's going to be certified as a two seater. However, um, as technology progresses, we intend to upgrade the payload to allow for at least three seats to be occupied. And then just we recently uh, announced that we also have a collaboration with Safran. Uh, Safran is going to provide us with the Ingenious 100 power plant, um, a, an ideal power plant for uh, this type of aircraft. It's an air-cooled uh, smart motor with an integrated uh, controller in a quite small package. And uh, what's interesting, it has a redundant electrical design. It's basically two um, electric motors in one housing, which would greatly increase the safety and the uh, redundancy of a single engine aircraft. Then let's take a bit of detail uh, at the battery system. So, um, um, EP Power System would not only provide us with the individual battery modules, they would also provide us with the battery power management, um, safety features, surface disconnects, low voltage uh, distribution, as well as the entire cabling. And it's actually a quite um, quite neat package to integrate into our aircraft. Then let's take a look a bit about our uh, electrical system. It's going to be uh, at a higher voltage than what is normally done in uh, e-aviation at the moment, 800 volts, which would uh, lead to uh, lower cable masses and uh, less current losses. The capacity will be approximately 85 kilowatt hours. Um, and what's also very interesting about this modular design is the mechanical integration. Uh, basically, these modules can be linked together in a row, not requiring any uh, jumper cables in between, and that allows for a quite efficient um, integration. And these battery modules intend to have a uh, TSO approval, making it quite easy to uh, certify along with our airframe. And then the Ingenious 100 motor. Um, so the Ingenious is actually a product line offering electric, a range of electric motors from uh, single-digit uh, powers all the way up to 500 kilowatts. Ours will be approximately 130 kilowatts and it actually will enhance the EDA40's performance. Thermally, it's quite easy to manage because it's an air-cooled uh, motor, meaning with some simple ducting we can keep the temperatures under control. And the efficiency will be well over 90% with, uh, and above 94% in uh, the cruise flight. And uh, what I also mentioned is it's a very neat package with the inverter already within the, within the housing, meaning that system in integration of the aircraft is, um, is very manageable. And the certification will have its own EASA type certificate, will be completed uh, as early as mid of next year.
Then to, um, to end, um, so what is the EDA 40 in practice? Well, first of all, it's the lower operating cost. And this is why it makes sense at this moment to use this relatively novel technology. We expect a, um, a reduction of approximately 40% when compared to conventional powertrains because of the lower maintenance costs and the lower fuel costs. And then just a quick note about the charging. We mentioned fast turnaround times. So together with our, with our battery partner, we are developing a, a charging solution that will allow uh, a turnaround time of 20 to 30 minutes. So you can imagine uh, in a training environment, um, a training flight of one hour, the aircraft lands, and then in 20 to 30 minutes it will be recharged again. And that's about the time we needed to breathe and debrief um, the student pilot. And then about the future, I mentioned that we want to be future-proof. Um, we actually expect that we can increase the range of a payload as the battery technology evolves. Uh, these are so-called modular battery systems, meaning that it's very easy to swap them and upgrade them in the future. And uh, we already expect the next-gen battery system, so the ones with the higher energy density, to already be available in the next two to four years. So I wish I had a lot more time to talk about the EDA for it. Unfortunately, I've been limited. Um, so thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward uh, to your questions uh, later on. Thank you, Mark. And uh, it's exactly the problem. I also would have a lot of questions right away. And I know you have, but we only have limited time on a, on a show. That's why I try to give that you did get a glimpse of everybody. And then where you're more interested, they are here at the show, so you can have a follow-up. And you can follow up in our magazines, because we will have a larger report on our magazines. We will give you more details on the aircraft. We were already reporting on the DF-40 when it was first announced last year. And now we are uh, getting uh, closer, so we hope that soon we can do electric training flying. I just mentioned, uh, forgot to mention, it's mentioned in the announcement. Yes, there is one aircraft already which is on the market, which is a Velis, uh, uh, what, this is CSLSA, so it is in another class and it has a very limited flight time. So now I come, our next speaker is again in another class. It's uh, a new aircraft, what Kalin Gologan from Electra Solar is announcing. Um, and this is an aircraft uh, which want to fly in the ultralight class because luckily, not long ago, the weight limit was lifted up to 600 kilogram, and he will explain us how with 600 kilogram he will make longer flight time possible. Kali, it's yours. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. And I, I am the Kalin Gologan, the CEO of the company Electra Solar in Landsberg. And we present now Electra Trainer and Ultralight two seat electra, electric aircraft. What is special for our aircraft? And a, a little uh, short history. We have an aircraft, Electra One, flying since 2011, uh, electric. I have a lot of experience. And last year, this aircraft was certified in the German Ultralight class, uh, LTF UL. 2020, the new regulation. And now, based on this experience, we scaled Electra 1 to the Electra 2. This is a big advantage for us because we reduce development cost and development risk. And for the certification, we need only to repeat the same procedure from Electra 1 on Electra 2 because it's a similar aircraft from the aerodynamic point of view, structure point of view, and electric power unit and system point of view. Uh, what is uh, special for air, uh, this aircraft? At first, energy efficiency. It's light and has a very good aerodynamic a glide ratio of uh, 25. And for this reason, we can fly more than two hours. Uh, something special. We can fly horizontally only with 12 kilowatt. It's very less. We have a battery package of 35 kilowatt hour and in this way we can fly two and a half hour with reserve. Uh, also special for this aircraft is uh, 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 very good comfort, a large cabin, 1.25 meter wide, accommodating pilot, two meter pilots and 
the same time, this aircraft was designed for very low operation cost. And we realized this low operation cost due to the low operation cost of electric power unit. And this operation cost is not only current, not only all the all all electricity, which is about only 3.6 euro per hour, also low operation cost to the battery, because the battery is also has a life and we need to pay for this life reducing. So totally we get an operation cost of our electric power unit about 20 euro per hour and also if compare this with the uh, uh, normal Rotax engine, especially in this time where the fuel uh, costs are increasing, operation cost of Rotax are at least 50 and more, let's say 60 euro per hour. So we save about 40 euros per hour due only due to the operation cost of the electric power unit. Another important goal for us was low noise. Noise? So if we speak about uh, sustainability, we don't speak, we speak not only about CO2 emissions. Emissions means also noise. And noise is a big problem in Germany. If one to have to bring an aircraft community friendly, to start close to communities without noise. So the aircraft is not the enemy for community. We have another big advantage, our charging system. We have two chargers we can put in the baggage compartment. It's a portable charging system and we can load in one hour for one hour of flight. You see here transition. In Foyer Ost we presented Electra 1. And you see here, Electra 2 are similar. You are looking, you think, uh, quite the same aircraft. But Electra 2 is a two-seater. I explained advantages also before. Uh, in, another big advantage is a short start distance. We have a good engine, 50 kilowatt power continues, and we can lift off in 100 meter. It's a big advantage. Now you see here a, a diagram. What means this diagram? The consumption, uh, how we can fly uh, six, seven hours of training with our system. Of course, if we consume the whole battery, then with two and a half hours we fly two hours and we charge. But it's another, also another possibility. We fly a flight hour 50 minutes, then we charge 30 minutes, then we fly another 50 and charge. So in this way, you see here, we can uh, fly about uh, seven flight hours per day. Very efficient. And why we can fly? We have a system without liquid cooling, because we protect the battery. We load the battery with 0.35C, we discharge with the same. We, we are climbing only 1C. So we protect the battery, we have a long battery life, and in this way we don't increase the temperature of the battery. We can live only with air cooling, that's a big advantage. This is a data sheet from the speeds. The best flight ratio is at a low speed, about 110 km. But using our variable pitch propeller, electric variable pitch propeller, we can also fly with 100 knots. A little less range and time. The best optimum point is 110. We have a good climb rate, uh, rate about 3 meters per second and uh, limit speed according to German regulation 45 knots. Operation cost, I explained, we have 60 euro per hour for flight training. If we fly about 500 hours per year, like a flying school, we can reduce operation cost to 60 euro, which is a wonderful, wonderful value. And another special thing for our aircraft is our digital platform. The whole data are uh, storage in our system, and we are working for cloud system for data transmission. If the customer wants it. Can, we can have access on all the data of the aircraft and use this for operation and the optimal maintenance. Here are some pictures we presented in the German Museum, Electra 2, in one month before. Here's in our booth. You see we have a nice uh, light, 
of landing here, electric retractable. In front you see the 50 kilowatt engine, up HPD 50. Nice interior, a very good instrumentation and display. This is not only a display, it's a high, very efficient, strong computer. We can extend this to an optimal, to an optionally pilot system. It's a next step for us. Uh, have complete flight uh, completely automatic. We have the experience on unmanned fly, we show in the video later. Thank you. This was a short presentation. If you can show a video yes. which presents uh, our products. We have many products in our company. Now we present it on the trainer. It's uh, 10 years, we, more than 10 years we invested in high technology. Our team is half mechanics, uh, structure, half electronic. We, all the IP is our. Electric power unit, structure, aerodynamic, uh, autopilot, and solar system. This is Electra One. Flying since more than 10 years, in 2015, we flew over the Alps more than 3,000 meter altitude. We use this aircraft for some research. The pilot is doing nothing here. It's automatic. We do pictures. We use this for 3D mapping. We have a cooperation partner for this. We have a nice camera system with five cameras. This is uh, Electra 2 Solar unmanned. This flew more than 10 kilometers unmanned, including start and landing. You see here some videos can fly up 20 km, also through the clouds. It's a robust aircraft, can fly in middle turbulence, moderate turbulence, there's some pictures from 10 km. This flight was 2019. Another project is the Electra 2 Solar. We delivered uh, this aircraft to the project Solar Stratos in Switzerland. Here, Rafael Domjan is jumping from a solar aircraft. And based on our technology, we have a future project. We have only designed the Electric E10 in the Skylax company, where the main share of the holder is Electra Solar. Actually, we concentrate on Electra Trainer, but we are looking in the future for the E regional mobility. It's a stall aircraft, low limit speed, 55 decibel, high comfort, and very low operation cost. It's another product you can see in our hall is our Electra Viton, a 2.5 kilogram payload, can fly up to three hours with, without solar cells, and uh, up to eight hours will be with solar cells. Very high efficient aerodynamic. We are, can fly missions with this for 3D mapping, and also we'll extend this with uh, gimbal and uh, real-time uh, image transmission. It's very robust, can land with strong wing. And now, Electra Trainer, I just presented this. Okay. We have a glide ratio of at least 25. This is our main purpose in the company, to have high efficiency, in aerodynamic and an electric power unit. Hmm. So the German Museum, our first presentation of the aircraft. And the second is now with the... We will fly this aircraft in two or three weeks. We are, we have quite ready the point to fly and we do the first flight uh, in May in uh, Memmingen. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Calvin. Um, very interesting. As we see in the B Hall, we have all ultralight aircraft, so I think there are a lot of people interested in this. Our next uh, presenter is a company which is also coming from ultralight. This aircraft, which Matthias Bench is now presenting, I think, or I know it's destined for Park 23 as well. So, Matthias, it's yours. Good afternoon. So, at first, yes, the F2 is certified according to Part 23 and it's not the airplane, the single airplane, 
it's a new concept of airplanes. An airplane itself doesn't know where the power is coming from. Does it come from fuel or from electric? An airplane needs power to stay in the air, and if your efficiency of the airplane is better, it stays longer. Again, doesn't matter what engines you have in. Ten years ago, twelve years ago, we start to talk over electric propulsion. At that time, we make a, a parallel uh, a hybrid propulsion, and we have a worldwide patent for it. But we find out, no, that's, well, that, that's a way to go, but that's not the way where we'll end up. So we needed a new concept because our old airplane, which is still so, uh, selling very well, the, the CT, with more than 2,000 airplanes around the world, has had limits for further propulsion systems. Now I have to find that. And uh, we invented the so-called F-Series. The F-Series is an affordable, scalable, modular system for two- and four-seat airplanes where, again, it doesn't matter what kind of propulsion you are using. We ourselves, we are an airplane designer and manufacturer. We are not a battery designer. We are not a propulsion designer. We are not an avionic designer. In 2019, at the same time, we bring up the F2 and the F2E, one airplane flying with a Rotax combustion engine, the other airplane at that time flying with a Siemens electric engine. But what we see at that time is batteries are maybe good enough for 45 minutes if you are optimistic. Huh? But we think when you go in flight training, you need an airplane which can fly two hours. Everything what is below two hours is not really practical, usable in the daily flight training. There is no problem with electric engine. There's a problem with certification. Because until now, there is no CSE certification existing for an electric engine. Many people are working on it. I'm sure that soon they will come up. Yeah? But at the moment, we don't have. But then, even when we have now the certified engine, it will lead up for us the question of the power source. And we have heard, I think, in the last 10 years, many, many concepts. We learned over many problems. But it would have been the same if we now invented the combustion engine. I think if we would go to the authorities now and say, hey, I want to put 200 liters of fuel into my wing, yeah, uh, they would not even start to laugh. You know? So yeah, uh, the, the problems are similar to what we achieved already. But it's a question of time. Now, what it will be at the end? Will we have a, a, a super battery? Will we have a possibility to store 10, 20, 30 kilograms of hydrogen in the airplane? Yeah. Everybody, or no, many people are working on these kind of solutions, and some of them are really promising, but when they will be certified, uh, it's nobody knows at the moment. So, with that, we are at the moment in two, uh, two ways. Uh, we work with a, uh, uh, with a hydrogen project, mm -hmm, where at the moment we will have seven kilos of uh, hydrogen. Seven kilos give you something like 90 kilowatts, I mean conservative, not dreaming, uh, 90 kilowatts of power. 90 kilowatts of power is something good enough for two hours for a two-seat airplane. Mm -hmm. Or we work on a, uh, on a battery solution, where the same, we need something like uh, 350 kilos of battery, and with the 350 kilos of battery, we can get something like 70 kilowatts, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, uh, and again, it's just okay for flying two hours. When these certified propulsion systems will be available, we will integrate them in the airplane as STC. We will not do, a, a, let's say, a certification of a power plant with the airplane. Because if you do that, you are very, very limited afterwards in the market. Because you will, okay, let's say you, you have a YASA certificate where you certify the engine uh, with the airplane. When you want to do a validation in whatever country around the world, 
you will be not successful. Because they will not accept, because this is not part of the scope of bilateral agreements. So we'll start from the scratch again. So that means a one integrated uh, good solution is our task. The airplane series we develop, uh, F2, F4, is very, I mean, it can do everything what everybody else says, so it's very comfortable, it has really space inside, enough space for hydrogen tanks, for batteries, for whatever we want, and it's really uh, very, very efficient. I just will go a little bit fast because I don't think this is so important on that, but, yeah, for example, when Flying Mates now tests uh, the uh, most efficient airplane in its category, uh, category was the F2. And I think that's enough proof of the energy efficiency of the airplane, which will be the same then when you have afterwards an electric airplane. Yeah? What we do in the meantime also uh, for the flight schools, we since 2020, when you buy an airplane from us with a Rotex 912 IS engine, uh, every airplane is CO2 compensated uh, by 100% for the first TPO. This is something we can do now, it costs some money, but it's every, everything what we can do at the moment completely. Uh, good. Thank you very much, and I hand it back to Willy. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, uh, interesting approach. Uh, our next speaker, we're going to one category higher because that's what I think, at least me believe, and a lot of people, that the first step we will use electric uh, propulsion will be training and then e-commuters come. And John Botti is going to tell us his approach. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, so for us, we're not shooting for trainers, we're shooting for commercial and we're shooting for congestion, we're shooting for you know, today a regional aviation that needs to be revamped and it needs to be revamped by using existing infrastructures. So what I'm going to introduce to you today is the concept that will help us to do that. And we have been flying now for more than two years, two and a half years, with the most powerful hybrid, parallel hybrid electric airplane that exists today. So instead of uh, me talking too much, I'm going to show a movie of how this has been built. So if you can put the music on also on this, 50 seconds you'll understand what we have been doing here. 600 kilowatts. Can you start? Ah, do I, is it me? Here we go. 600 kilowatts, 300 kilowatt electric, 300 kilowatt thermal. Can carry already the board train of 12 people. And it's flying since two years, more than two years now. complete new, obviously, digital cockpit where you made everything and we had to use an existing certified cell of six people but the power train is already capable of 12. 120 kW in the front Safran engines, Iginius, and three electric motors from Slovakia in the back that makes a 300 kW electric plus high performance Japanese engine of 300 kW to do the hybrid. This airplane always takes off electric, always lands electric and do recharge on flight with uh, the batteries on, on, on board. So it's uh, it, basically we use the thermal engine for safety and for recharging the batteries. By the way, we apologize, this airplane was supposed to be here next door, but uh, we when we got to Black Forest, uh, a belt broke into the thermal engine and uh, the two pilots had to come back in electric, full electric, and they landed one hour from here uh, in Montbéliard, so we couldn't show you the airplane, it was too late to bring it back here for the expo, but next year we will come back with this one and with another one. So this airplane today, uh, when it came to uh, the Black Forest, was already at 10,000 kilometers, and uh, you can see how much it's already outdated because this was, you know, I made this presentation a little bit before, 120 flight hours, 140 flights, 38 airports visited, and uh, as I said, this is a bit outdated. <clears throat> but when you do this, the power train is perfect, but the aerodynamics is not. 
the hell of a D of this one is around 10. We need at least 50% more aerodynamics efficiency. This is why we have created the Casio 2 uh, prototype, uh, which uh, your objective here Journal, just scan the QR code on this page or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying EV tolls and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.
sky.